So here I've started up bar, and I'm just going to do a little bit of simple plotting, just to kind of show what the the basics uh, are of the of the plotting options. So I'm going to simulate a little, a little bit of data here, just so I can make a plot. This is a couple a hundred uh, normal random variables here. I'm going to call hist to make a histogram of the plot. Uh, so the first thing you'll, you'll notice when I call hist is that a plot window opens up. So let me just move it over here, and the histogram of the data is shown. Um, and so you can see that even though I didn't actually specify any arguments to hist besides the data themselves, uh, a number of things uh, appear on the plot uh, without my specifying them. So for example, there's a title here, uh, and then there's an X label here. So here the, the label is just X because that's what the object was called when I passed it to hist. Um, the label here is frequency, which is um, the default for a histogram. So it shows you the number um, of elements uh, within this range. So for example, between minus one and zero, uh, there's going there's a little over 30 um, elements of the vector in that range. And you can see that the shape of the histogram is roughly like a normal distribution. Uh, so let me just um, generate some more data here. Uh, and so we can make a little scatter plot. So I'm going to generate some more data. Uh, and I'll plot x, y here. So now the plotting window is already open. So when I call plot, uh, it's not going to launch a new plotting window. It's going to send the plot to the uh, current plotting window, which is this one here. So I've specified, I've called plot, um, and um, you can see that it makes a scatter plot of the points. Um, the default plotting symbol here is an open circle. You can see, um, and um, again, the label. The, the, I didn't specify any arguments besides x and y, but the number of things have occurred in the plot. For example, the label here is specified as x uh, on the x-axis, and the label on the y-axis is specified as y. If I had changed the name of the object, so let's say I say uh, r gnome 100 here, and I plot x and z. Uh, well, the plot looks different because the data are different, uh, but you can see that the label here turned turn to Z because uh, that's the name of the object. Um, so let me just go back to X and Y. Um, and so a number of things uh, on the plotting region are important. For example, the margins here are, are there's four margins here, one for each side. Uh, this is side one, this is side two, uh, this is side three, and this is side four over here. Um, and you can see that the margin for the bottom is um, uh, is is the largest, so there's the, there's five lines of uh, margin text available. Uh, on the side two, there's four lines of margin text available. On the top, there's also four, so side three. And on the right side, side four, there's the smallest amount of um, a margin text available. Uh, so you can adjust that using the mar function. So for example, I can just say par, and then I say mar equals. Let's say I want let's say I want two on every side. So two, 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 excuse me. Uh, and then I can plot again. And you can see that now the plot, uh, the margins have gotten a lot smaller uh, and the plot kind of extends to a farther out into the window. But the problem is you can see that on the X and the Y axis, I lost my label. Uh, and so even though I have the tick marks there, um, I don't have my X and Y label. So we probably need to make them a little bit bigger than that. So maybe I'll say uh, four, four, two, two, like that. So now if I plot again, uh, now you can see there's just enough room uh, for the X and the Y label there. I'm just going to demo a couple of the other options uh, that may be of interest to you as you're constructing your plot. So the first is the plotting symbol. Um, I can say plot X, Y, and then PCH equals, let's say, 20. Uh, that gives me a solid circle here. If I want a slightly solid symbol here, I can say PCH equals 19. Um, or I can you know, specify PCH equals 2, it gives me triangles, 3 gives me little plus signs, 4 gives me x's, etc. Uh, so, so you can see that there's many different plotting symbols to try. Um, now you might be wondering how I know all the numbers for these plotting symbols. Well, it just comes after many years of use. I've memorized most of them all. Uh, but of course, if you haven't memorized them quite yet, uh, an, a handy uh, tool is the example uh, file for points. So if you just say points, example, sorry, points, um, it'll go through a number of demos. So you can see kind of the capabilities that are that uh, R can do with plotting. But most important are the uh, is there a little plot of uh, sorry, a little chart of the symbols here. Uh, and so you can see that say for example one is the open circle, two is the triangle, three is the plus, etc. Here uh, 20 was the solid circle, small. 19 was the larger circle. Uh, if you wanted a solid square, that's 15. Um, uh, the solid triangle is 17, etc. So you can um, um, 
specify what type of symbol you want just by using the number here. Um, another the thing, if you notice the symbols 21 through 25, uh, those are actually symbols that are similar to say, well, to ones that are have been previously shown, so for example, 1 through 6. However, the difference is um, in 21 through 25, those symbols have a, uh, have a, have a boundary, so you can see that the boundary is red, and they have a fill, uh, which in this case is yellow. So you can specify two different colors, one for the boundary and for the outline, and one for the color. Um, and so the boundary color is specified using the call, um, C-O-L, argument. Um, and the, uh, the background color, the fill color, is specified using the BG uh, argument. So you, so you can specify two different colors like that if you want. Um, here's just another uh, chart of the uh, plotting symbols. And um, you can continue through the uh, demo here for points if you want. And um, let me just finish it up here. These are some of the special symbols that you can plot if you want. Uh, this is in a different font. And let me just uh, quit out of here. So, th so that's one way to um, change the symbol here. I'm going to go back to my plot here. Let's say PCH equals, um, let's say 20. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have to uh, regenerate my data because it was overwritten by the example. So here's my data again, uh, my little scatter plot. Um, now uh, I can add a title to the plot by using the title. As I'll say, this is my scatter plot, and that adds the title. Um, I could add some text if I wanted to. So for example, I could use the text function to say add a little label here. Um, let's see, I'll give it the coordinates. Let's say uh, minus two and then minus two. See that the label appears there. I can add a legend uh, if I wanted to. Um, Save the legend. And the legend, you can give it kind of um, location specifications. So for example, top left, we'll put the legend in the top left. And then I'll say, um, I'll just give it a stupid label. Um, oops, excuse me, uh, let me just uh, add the plot symbol there. So now I've got a little legend there. Um, and so, the, so there's all kinds of annotations that you can add. Um, to the data uh, uh, as you kind of go along. So, for example, I could fit a if I want to plot a line to the data, I could fit a linear model uh, using the LM function. Uh, then the AB line function uh, will add the linear model fit on top of that. Here, the data are related to the other, each other, so the um, the linear model is uh, the line is pretty flat. Um, if I wanted to adjust the thick thickness of that line, I could use the AB line uh, and specify the um, LWD. Uh, to be, let's say, three. Uh, and you see that now a new line is plotted over that, which is much thicker. Uh, so you probably wouldn't want to do this uh, from the get-go. If you want to remake this plot, you probably just specify from the get-go LWD equal to three. You don't want to necessarily plot two lines on top of each other, but I'm just showing this for demonstra demonstration sake. Um, I could have also changed the color, um, so make the color, say, blue, and that would make it blue. Uh, and so uh, there are lots of different types of options you can specify here uh, when you're as you're making the plot. Um, so usually you're going to want to create X labels and Y labels, uh, which are kind of represent what the data are. So you can plot, you can put a lot of these options in the plot function itself. So I can say plot X Y, and, and maybe um, X lab is uh, let's say weight, and then the Y lab, well, y lab will be say height. Uh, the main will be scatter plot. Uh, PCH will be 20. So that gets now I have actual labels on the x's and the y axis. Uh, I can put my legend back if I want. Maybe I'll put it in the top right this time. Um, and then um, I can add my little line here. So I can say fit is. Uh, maybe I'll make the line red this time. So that's my plot with the labels, uh, with the linear regression line, and with the legend. Now let's see what happens when we try to put more than one plot on the page. 
Uh, so for example, let's say I have another variable which I'll call z, and maybe it's, uh, I don't know, I'll make some Poisson data here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and uh, let's say I want to plot z versus x, and then I also want to plot y versus x on the same canvas here. So uh, the first thing I can do is let's say I want to put let's say I want to put the plots right on top of each other. So let's say par mf row equals. Uh, so what's going to happen is I want to have two rows of plots and then one column of plots, right? So that's uh, what we want to see. So now I'll plot x and y on the top and x and z on the bottom. So x and y. So pc equals twenty. So you see that goes on the top, and on the bottom here, I'll give x and z, let's say it equals uh, 19, and that goes on the bottom. So now you can see that the margins are a little bit large here, lar probably larger than we would want, um, and you can see that the, the, the uh, margin that I ha that's specified here is that. And so we probably want to adjust the size of the margin now that we've kind of re- uh, so, rearrange the configuration of the plots. Uh, so we can maybe say something like um, uh, par, let's say mar equals that. Now if I plot it again, they get a little bit bigger. Let's say 20 again. So um, that's how now I put uh, two plots on the screen. I could have done it the other way. I could have said instead of having top and bottom, I could have had them right and left so by saying par uh, mammoth row equals say one two. Uh, now I can plot like this, um, uh, like that. So I can see uh, I made the margins a little bit too small because I lost my y-axis label here. So maybe I'll just say par. I'll go back to four four two two like this and make the plots again. So you can see um, that when you rearrange the plotting uh, di layout, you might want to rearrange the, the, the canvas itself to kind of remove some of the white space. Uh, I won't do that for the moment, just so I can continue with the demo here. Uh, but for example, you can put four plots on a page, uh, like say mar equals, uh, sorry, MF, MF row equals two, two. That means two rows, two columns. So I can say plot X and Y that will go in the upper left. And you see that now I can plot X and Z. You might wonder, where's the next plot going to go? Well, because I specified MF row, the plots are going to go uh, across the row. So the next plot's going to be in the upper right. Uh, and then the next plot's going to be in the lower left. So let's say I'll plot Z and X instead of X and Z. Um, and then the last plot's going to go in the uh, lower right here. So that, now I've got four plots on a page by specifies, specifying the MF row uh, option. If I'd specify MF call, um, the same thing would have happened, but the order in which the plots occurred would have been different. So now I can say plot x, y, and that appears in the same place. But the next plot now um, is going to appear in the lower left, and the next plot's going to be in the upper right, and the last plot's going to be in the lower right. So that's the difference between MF row and MF call. The last option I'll talk about here um, is the points uh, function, just as a, show, as a demonstration to how you can annotate a plot um, by adding things to it. So um, let me just reset the plot region so that I'm only doing one plot at a time here. Um, now let's suppose I generate some data, and, and suppose that the data consists of, say, men and women. So there's two groups of people here. So I'm just going to generate some um, data here. And maybe I'll give them a little relationship, so it's not a little bit more interesting. Uh, and let's say um, I've got uh, another variable here, which is the group, uh, and it's going to be half and half. So there's two groups, and there's 50 levels, 50 uh, iterations of each. Uh, uh, let me just give them the names. So let's say labels. So I've got males and females uh, in this uh, group of people here. So you can see there it's a factor variable with two levels. So suppose I wanted to plot the data. If I just plot the data x and y, uh, you can't tell who are the males and who are the females, right? Because they're all the same color, for example. And uh, so suppose I want to plot the data and plot the, make the males one color and the females another color. Um, so how do I do that? So the first thing you want to do, the basic idea is you're going to set up the plot region, but you're not going to plot any of the data. Um, and then you're going to add the data uh, 
by gender. So you're going to maybe add the females first and then add the males. And the idea is that each time you add the data points, they'll be of a different color, or perhaps a different plotting symbol or whatever. So let, first, let's set up the plotting region. So I'm going to say plot x, y. So I'm going to pass it the data. Uh, but I'm going to say type equals n. So this means make the plot, but don't actually put the data in there. So you can see when I hit execute this function, everything happens just like before. The labels are put in, the, the tick marks are put in, uh, the margins are specified, everything is there except for the data. So the only thing that's missing is the data. And so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to add the data, but I'm going to add them one group at a time. So let's say I add the males first. So I can say points x, and then I'm going to subset the vector so that the g, I only take the points where g is equal to male. Right? So that's a subset. And then I'm going to say y, and then g is equal to male. So this is only going to plot the, plot the points um, where, um, where the values of the g variable are equal to male. And let's say I'm going to set, make the, that color uh, green. Okay. So now you can see the points on the, on the screen uh, are green. Those, are, those represent the male points only. Uh, so I can do the same thing for the females. So I can say points x and then g is equal to female. And the y, g is equal to female. And let's say I'll make these um, blue. So now you can see that the, there are blue circles uh, for the females and there's green circles for the males. And so you can see the two groups um, separately uh, within the scatter plot. And so subsetting based on a grouping variable uh, is very common when making plots. And the points function can be used to kind of add points sequentially by group so that you can specify different types of properties for each group. Uh, you can also, in addition to varying the color, I could have changed the plotting symbol. So I could have said PCH equal to, let's say, 19. So this is the kind of solid circle here. And that would have given me a solid blue circle for the females and an open green circle for the males. So that's one way to, to separate out groups of data points on a single scatter plot.